Via telephone, the uh, House Majority Leader, Derek, Derek, Delegate Eric Household. I just combined your uh, position with your name there, Derek. Yeah, hey, good morning, Rob, and good morning, Bill. And uh, Bill, I'd have to agree, agree with you. Uh, Charles Trump's a, gr- a great man, and I think be a great addition to the court. So. He, he really would be, Eric. So. Yes, yeah. he would. Eric, uh, I want to get into the revenue numbers with you uh, first, but uh, I want to get to, there's a lot of rumors about yes. Eric Householder that are out there. And we're seeing a lot of musical chairs being played as witnessed by Senator Trump's last appearance. Yesterday, Delegate John Hardy said that uh, he will not return after his term ends. Instead, he'll seek a position at county commission uh, Mm -hmm. here in Berkeley County. What is the future of Eric Householder? Well, right now, the future of Eric Householder is to continue to run for office in the House. Uh, uh, One of our delegates, one of my delegate friends called me the other day and said, hey, I hear there's a rumor that you're interested in running for auditor. And I just laughed. I said, no, no, I I haven't gave it any thought. Uh, I've been asked also, I've given it some careful consideration for treasure, but uh, I haven't made a decision. But as of now, I'm fully expecting that I will just continue to run for the uh, House of Delegates. As I think most folks know, Eric, uh, the current auditor and current treasurer will both be vacating their office mm-hmm. to run for other offices. So those bo- yeah, both of right. those offices will be open. So. Yeah, you have our current auditor, J.B. McCuskey, who's running for governor, and, of course, our treasurer, Riley Moore, who's running for Congress. The attorney general is running for governor. Mm-hmm. The, the attorney general is running for governor as yeah. well. I think the ag uh, secretary is coming back as ag secretary. At least he's going to try to, right, Kent Leonhardt? Yeah. And who, Secretary of State's also running for governor. So yep. it's a up. In fact, we may have some shakeup in the Eastern Panhandle, as you mentioned. Obviously, uh, Delegate John Hardy is going to take a run for uh, the county commission. Paul Espinoza is challenging uh, Senator Rucker. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, obviously, we're going to be losing some seats or gaining new Republicans, possibly. And uh, so a lot of surprises. And yeah. Eric, uh, from an Eastern Panhandle point of view, before we get into these revenue numbers again, which is the main reason why I wanted to talk to you today. But it took the Eastern Panhandle a long time to get power positions in the legislature. And and now the Eastern Panhandle is very well represented, either in chairman positions or vice chair positions or Senate president positions. And as as the musical chairs happen, I wonder how many of the new chairs will be filled by people out of the Eastern Panhandle. It is a concern. Well, it, it is a little setback, but we've got we've got a strong bench. I mean, you've got Mike Height, Mike Hornbeach, Chuck Horst, and uh, Larry Tump. So, you know, Mike Height, uh, he's doing very well on finance, and, and Hornbeach's doing a great job on education. So I think in time you're going to see those two gentlemen, along with Chuck Horst, who's the chairman of uh, Natural Resources, you're going to see those gentlemen fill that void and, and start moving up and uh, – you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, I never thought in a moment's notice that I would ever have became the finance chair, let alone the majority leader. But, uh, you know, sometimes it just you – know, fate has a, a funny way of how you end up in a certain position. But, uh, you know, I feel quite comfortable with uh, the, the bench that we have and an opportunity for maybe two more new uh, people who's out there, who we – rising stars who we may not even know and add to the list mm-hmm. uh charlie trump leaving the senate we've been talking yeah. about the house yeah. but charlie and uh, the uh, charlie's replacement will have to be from morgan county yeah yes i mean and that's a great great question i mean who uh who reassesses who who looks at that seat i mean charlie's taking a a, a free run at it uh does anybody and obviously if charlie wins then uh that seat uh, would have someone would have to be appointed to that seat but uh, it's it's interesting that who who's waiting in the background for that to happen. I, the answer is I just don't know. Does yeah. Ken Reed reassess his thoughts now that yeah. Charlie Trump has decided that he will not be running for Senate? Yeah, that's that's a great point too. Does does Ken give that careful consideration? Does Daryl Coles come back? You know who Daryl who Coles? Is it? I mean, just don't know the answer. Yeah, uh, Eric, you used a. Uh, a term second ago that i'm a little confused with you said a free run uh that does not imply that uh charlie can run for uh uh for supreme court and run for senate seat at the same time does it right but his term doesn't end in in, i think another two more years so obviously this november election is uh when uh the uh or next 24 the next november election is when his uh when that seat is up for Supreme Court, and 
and now that I think about it, uh, I, now I forget exactly what uh, what election cycle he ran. I guess it was uh, twenty. Was it twenty two? Yeah, Trump twenty twenty two. Because uh, Craig Blair is yeah. up this year in twenty four, so his term will end in twenty six. Uh, twenty six. So. Yeah, but now does that imply that if he should lose the Supreme Court, that he will retain his Senate seat? I'm pretty sure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that do for all the candidates who are running for that uh, uh, for the vac- uh, suppo- uh, possibly vacant Senate seat? Well, it's not vacant until uh, uh, Charles would vacate the seat, so it's not even vacant. So, so you do not think the candidates for uh, the Senate seat would be on the ballot uh, next they time? They would not. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. You're yeah. right. They would not. And then the executive committee would appoint someone to replace Charles Trump in the event that uh, Senator Trump would win. That he vacates. Okay. By the way, Brad Nold chipped in and said that the seat can also come from Hampshire County. Okay, yes, exactly. It cannot come from Berkeley. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it can right. either also come from Mineral County. Mineral, I believe yeah, the yeah. 15th is Berkeley, yeah. Morgan, Hampshire, and Mineral. You're right, because Charlie mentioned in his interview that he was representing four counties. Yeah, so right. there's yeah. options yeah. there. Uh, Eric, let's uh, talk about the numbers. The state, once again, blew it out in May, uh, beating the numbers uh, by $134.5 million. Hey, you're right, Rob. Eleven straight months of uh, surpluses. Uh, so our May estimates, ending May 31st, uh, May estimates were $339 million for the month of May. May collections were $473 million. That's the surplus of $134 million over our estimates. So where do we, where do we come up with $134 million? Well, personal income tax collections for May uh, exceeded estimates by $43 million. So total collections year-to-date for personal income tax are $2.4 billion. Uh, consumer sales tax collections for May exceeded estimates by $16 million. So total collections year-to-date are $1.5 billion. Uh, severance tax collections for May exceeded estimates by $47 million. So total collections year-to-date are $890 million. And keep in mind, we normally collect about 400 to 500 million tops in severance, and we're already at 890 million dollars. So severance is just firing on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, corporate net income tax exceeded estimates by 10 million dollars. So where are we at for the whole entire year? So fiscal 23 estimates for the entire year was 4.1 billion. Our fiscal year 23 collections of 5.9 billion. Surplus to date, a little over of $1.7 billion with the month of June remaining when we close out our, our year. So you could see $1.8 billion surplus easily. Yeah. A couple of questions on that, Eric. Uh, yeah. One, the, uh, the, the, uh, the legislators just recently voted a uh, reduction in personal income tax. That kicks in next January, does it? No, it's already in place now. It's it was in place. retroactive, so okay. people are seeing higher paychecks, higher take-home pay. So, um, so this in, this increase we're seeing in personal income tax actually incorporates or includes the uh, the uh, recent legislation act, legislative action. That's the first, yeah. That's the first statement because it was retroactive yeah. until back to January one. So okay. yeah, and we're still exceeding. You know, typically, we bring in. Two billion to two point two billion dollars a year in personal income tax. Right now, year to date, we're at two point four billion, and of that seven hundred million dollar total tax cut that we gave, um, one hundred and sixty three million of it was retroactive back in March when we passed the bill okay. for those three months. Uh, you mentioned severance taxes uh, kicking in all cylinders. If we uh, how if we Mountain Valley pipeline is is constructed which it looks like it will be now is there are there any estimates of what how much increase in severance tax that will bring in good question i haven't seen any but naturally what you will see bill is you're going to see a bump in personal income tax and you'll see a bump in sales taxes so those two will obviously increase but uh you know once they get the the pipeline completed once there's more you know gas flowing down the line then obviously the, the natural thought process is yes you'll see severance tax increase um like i just mentioned you know, typically we bring in about 400 million dollars a year that's the safe bet in severance tax but with the price of coal and natural gas lately obviously we're bringing in twice that amount and that's what's helped tremendously build a lot of this surplus um 
as I mentioned last time I was on the show with you and Rob, we have already spent about $1.1 billion of this projected $1.7 or $1.8. So there's still going to be $600, $700 million left up uh, to play at. And I suspect sometime in August we may have a special session you know, to determine, you know, where are we going to make investments? Are they going to be in roads or schools and water and sewer systems or, or broadband? And, you know, none of those questions have been determined yet. The, uh, I'm going to come back to broadband in a second, but what is the ref- uh, percentage of severance tax for coal versus oil and, uh, versus oil and gas? Well, by far, coal is the biggest. Uh, I don't know the percentage off my off the top of my head. I believe the last I've looked, coal generates 230 to 300 million. So then your natural gas would break up the other 150 million. So mostly coal is is the biggest driver. Are are they uh, are they uh, is ta- I guess tax is the right word. Are the tax the same or does uh, is one tax at a higher level? Uh, Level, level they're relative, other. yeah, they're relatively close. We uh, a couple of years ago we reduced the severance tax just on steam coal to try to make it a little bit more competitive for, you know, our, against our neighboring states. Uh, the um, the severance tax on gas is somewhat comparable to the Met coal. Met coal is higher than the steam coal, and I don't remember recall the percentages, you know, off the top of my head, but uh, they're somewhat close. If I'm not mistaken mistaken i believe it's like four percent for natural gas and uh pretty close to four and a half five percent for met coal okay uh you mentioned broadband uh we've yeah. been fortunate to get quite a bit of uh federal dollars for broadband i know in times past the state has invested are we close to having sufficient money to implement a broadband expansion program or are we still looking for uh more dollars no, you're going to see more state dollars being invested. I mean, the last uh, infusion of cash, cash for, from the state level was about $100 million. Then we did another $50 million. So $150 million in. I mean, all told, um, we're expecting to see $800 million from the feds. We're, we're, we're expecting us to spend about $1 billion just in broadband development across the state to get our citizens up to where, you know, Obviously, there's no dial-up issues and stuff like that, but uh, the question will become, will the citizens take advantage of, because once again, you know, some stories that I'm hearing, uh, people are still not willing to pay $50, $60 a month for reliable broadband service. Not everywhere, but I'm still hearing people say, hey, you know, they, they, they may not be willing to pay that amount of money for a faster broadband service. Some of those rural areas. House Majority Leader Eric Halsoder, our guest on the program. Eric, as I look at the rainy day fund, I see that from September through March, it was at a billion or more, and now it's at $949 million plus. So what's the reason for the drop, and will it require you to pump any more money into it? There will be. The, you know, that's another thing. Uh, there is talks that maybe an infusion of about $50 million to get it somewhere closer to where it was. Uh, but I would be hesitant, hesitant to put any more with the market conditions. I mean, it, the more money that you put into it, if you're going to lose money on the investment side of it, why do that? Just take the free ride, let the market fluctuate a little bit, and don't lose as much. But uh, even at $949 billion, I, I mean, it's still one of the strongest rainy day funds out there. We're like the fourth best in the nation. Um you know, I, I'm not opposed to maybe injecting $50 million in it and just let it ride for another year and a half or, or until the next session's over. The correction officers, we've talked about that quite a bit, but not so much recently. Uh, is that is that strictly an economic issue now or problem now? Uh, if it is, will that be fixed with this uh, surplus money? I, I do believe so. I, I know uh, Senator Barrett, I don't know if you've had him on your show lately. Um, I know he went to Charleston a couple weeks ago. Uh, I talked to his counterpart on the House side who called me uh, with some ideas that they're floating around. Obviously, it's, it involves money. Um, but I, I did try to play a little devil's advocate with him to make sure, hey, look, money's not always the, the, the key issue. Uh, we need to make some structural changes, too. Are you looking at those structural changes? He assured me that, that they were. Uh, 
uh, they have uh, reached out to corrections to to see if they would offer up any advice of where some of these structural changes could take place. And the last I heard when I spoke to uh, Delegate Kelly, and, and excuse me, but I have not got a chance to speak to Senator Barrett about to see if there's been any movement uh, since uh, two and a half weeks ago when he was down there. Yeah. We had Jason on uh, right after the meeting, after the interims. Um, I remember it was just a couple of days after he got back from that. Yeah, I think you're going to see some salary enhancement. Um, but that's all I know is as of right now. But like I said, I, I know they were working diligently on it. And uh, you will see, I hope, some structural changes. Eric, there was obviously a break given to people for the state income tax. Was there also a break on the corporate income tax? Well, yeah. Uh, remember, it's uh, any corporation's. For any small business under a million dollars, they were they would see uh, you know a, a reduction in their personal property taxes, and that would include corporations as well. Okay, but in terms of uh, corporate income tax, was there at the state level? No, we didn't address the corporate net income tax. No, will you? The last time, the last time it was addressed was back. Uh, Senator Manchin was governor, and I believe he reduced it from six and a half down to six percent. Will that? be a topic of discussion in the next session any idea it, it could be i mean I, i'm looking as you know uh, it, it, any opportunity that i can spur more economic growth and I, i've mentioned before that the north carolina model something that i have tried to follow is a lower of personal income tax along with a lower of uh, corporate net income tax and by doing so, they, they were able to, you know, attract or, or actually increase in, uh, to an amount of about a $3 billion surplus. Um, you know, the old axiom, if you want more of something, you have to tax less of it. Uh, so far, I mean, for the last two years that I've been monitoring our corporate net income tax, we're exceeding our estimates. So I, I think it would be perfectly fine to, to put it on a path to, to – at a percentage reduction, maybe a half a percent per year, um, I, you know, I, I think it's something that we could do to attract more businesses to the state. And does that mean that from an individual state income tax uh, reference point, there's enough surplus this year to trigger another cut next year? Well, keep in mind, in July, we're going to see the CPS numbers from the um, Bureau uh, once we see the CPS number, we gave it, I believe, in the bill August is when tax and revenue has to come up with the uh, to see what percentage that we're going to be. To answer your question, I think we'll see another 10 percent easily this year. Yeah, let's extend this to the county uh, level. Uh, the Berkeley County has been uh, lobbying for quite a while. The the ability to impose a 1% sales tax. They're making uh, an argument they'd be willing to give up something if they could get the 1% sales tax. Do you see something like that coming, uh, uh, being made available to the county? I don't see anything out there on the horizon. But keep in mind, you know, you're not just speaking of Berkeley County. I mean, I, mean, just, I don't think you can just write a bill that say Berkeley no, County no. would have one. I you know was I, mean? I was using them yeah. for an example, Eric. I, I, right, I right. yeah, okay. Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know what they would give up. You know, um, the rain tax for one thing. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good possibility. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, as it stands right now, I, I'm not hearing much more discussion on. It. I think you're seeing the opposite direction. You, you want to see the state get its taxes lower to make us more competitive with our neighboring states. Um, and then, obviously, sometime in the future, we could address some local concerns. But, uh, I mean, there's been talk about it for several years. Uh, I've even mentioned as far as going, uh, as far as saying, but, hey, let's reduce our state income tax or take some of our state income tax and not raise it, but uh, give the counties more, more of a share of it, so to speak. So, I mean, we have a 6% sales tax. You've heard me talk about you could broaden out the sales tax base and reduce the sales tax probably down to one or two percent and uh but even if you broaden out the base uh if you did something like that you could like i said conceivably have about a two percent sales tax keep one percent and give a half a percent or three quarters of a percent over to the counties 
And uh, but I think uh, in the long run, you're, you're going to see the economy improved. Improve. Uh, you're going to start seeing, um, you know, um, more tax reductions, which I think is going to bring in more businesses, which is going to be- benefit counties in the long run. And with that, Eric, we're just about out of time. Hey, when's the next interim session? Uh, August. Early or late? We'll be down there in August. Are you, is it early in August, do you know, or is it later in August? I don't have it up right now, but I think it's early. I think it's like the second week. Okay. Where, where so you, I think August 9th. Are you, last time I looked at it, I thought the 9th came to mind. Are you in Charleston for that one? Yes, yes, we'll be in Charleston. Okay, good. Eric. Eric, Eric is always good information. Thanks much. Hey, thanks, gentlemen. See you all. Have a good day, Eric. It is uh, House Majority Leader Eric Householder from the House.